Chris, thank you for tuning in to our Good Friday service, and I hope that you guys are all blessed. And as we all saw here conclude the recording of the opening of the Lord's Day, Lord, we come before you this evening. God, I pray that you would open the hearts of your people, God, and that you would just have your way. And we thank you, we love you, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise.
Hey, good evening, Victory Outreach Westlake. We want to thank each and every single one of you for tuning into our Good Friday service. It's going to be an awesome time. It's a time where the greatest expression of love that was ever given to mankind. We got just a few announcements. We want to encourage everybody to keep tuning in. This Sunday, we're going to have our Easter service at 1030 a.m. We have a special presentation from our founder, Sonny Argonzoni Sr. So we want to encourage everybody to tune in, tune in and don't miss out with that and then we want to remind everybody about the rest of the week our Tuesday night Bible studies get with your leaders um, find out how to tune in if you don't know and then gang God's anointed now generation we have our Wednesday night um, zoom meeting don't miss out you guys you guys can find all the information to logging in on our Facebook account so we just want you guys to enjoy the rest of the service and if you're not a part of Victory Outreach Westlake we want to encourage you you're more than welcome to be a part of us at the end of the service we'll be posting all our contact information if you guys would like to get a hold of us and be a part of us thank you for tuning in enjoy the rest of the service and god bless you Everything must be fulfilled. You do not understand now what I'm doing. One day you will. Well, happy Good Friday, everybody. And the reason we call it Good Friday is because it is good. There's nothing bad about Good Friday. And we're going to celebrate tonight when Jesus was crucified. And one of, one of the greatest victories ever told or we've ever experienced for Christians today. The Bible says in Mark 9.23, it says, All things are possible for those who believe. Now, when we look at the cross and when Jesus was crucified and he died on that cross, it was the end of the old covenant which brought us into the new. So now when this took place and the blood was shed, this is when the new covenant started, which you and I live in. Because in the old covenant, we were under the law and we couldn't fulfill it. But when Christ went to the cross, he fulfilled the for us, how we could be free today. I'm going to share the scripture now and then I'm going to pray. And Victor Outreach Westlake, it's good to talk to you tonight. We miss you. We love you. Sister Latasha, happy birthday. Amen. We know you're at home watching the family. We're not together in physical, but we're together in spirit. So if you can take your Bibles tonight and go to the book of John. 14, and I'm going to start in 18. And look what Jesus says. This is a promise for you and I. This is a promise that's already been fulfilled. He says here, I will go, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. He says, but you will see me because I live you also will live on that day you will realize that I am the father that I am in the father and you are in me 
and I am in you. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just, Lord, we just thank you for the cross tonight. We thank you for the crucifixion, the resurrection, God, your life. And tonight, it's Good Friday, Lord, this day. And it's a reflection of when you paid the price for us to have a great life, a good life. And God, to make a way to heaven for us. Lord, I pray for every member of our church, those listening tonight. Even with the struggles we're having in this day and age, Lord. With the troubles, with the anxiety. We know that you are greater than that. And Lord, I just pray for all the listeners tonight. That you would just touch them with your word in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Well, I don't see you, but you see me. And it's good to be connecting tonight. I haven't seen our church members in a while. And, you know, we feel it. On behalf of Pastor Vico, Mama Liche, you know, they miss you, love you, appreciate you. And we all miss each other. And that's why we're only a phone call away. And because of the cross of Jesus, because of what he did, and because his Holy Ghost came, we're family in spirit. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about what the cross did. I'm not going to focus on what he went through to get there. But I'm going to focus on what it did for you and I to have a better life today. Because this all came to pass for a reason. We see in the scripture here, he says, I won't leave you. You may be sitting in your living room right now. You may be in the kitchen. You could be in your car. But God won't leave you. Jesus won't leave you. He will never leave us, not forsake us. He says, I won't leave you as our orphans. Because when he died on the cross and rose again, we became a family of believers. We became co heirs We became part of Christ. Because Christ came in us, and we became in him, and we're hidden in God. We're safe, and we're blessed and sure where we know where we're going to go. Jesus was so good as a carpenter, he took two pieces of wood and made it all the way all to heaven for you and I. Isn't that something to rejoice about, Victor Outreach Westlake? Isn't that something to be blessed about? Because this is Good Friday. Even though everything is going on around us, even though we have troubles, amen, people are anxious, people are in fear, but we have the Holy Ghost, we have the Spirit of God. And we have the blessed assurance that Jesus is in us. And Jesus is in our household. Jesus is in our kids. And we have hope. Some people don't have hope. But we have hope. And the only reason we have that hope is because he paid the price for you and I. Can I get an amen tonight? If you're with your wife, tell her Jesus loves her. Tell your kids Jesus loves them. Tell them about the cross. Tell them that we have life and life to the full because God is a good God and a great God. And I'm going to share something with you tonight that should encourage you and bring us to a place where we have the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Can I get an amen? So here we see, he says, I am in the Father and you are in me. Huh? And I am in you. Now here we see he's prophesying this about the death on the cross. Because the disciples, they were with Jesus, and he was with them. But they weren't in him, and he wasn't in them. Because that access came at the cross. Now when they were living with him and going through this with him, he was on his way to the cross, but he was trying to prepare them and to fulfill the, the, the scriptures of what was going to take place as his crucifixion. In John 19, different aspect of a perspective of what took place on that cross because this was the greatest victory all known in mankind this was something that took place that was going to set you and me free and we were not even born yet that's what took place and that's the power of this crucifixion and the resurrection in three days later and we will be going there Sunday with Pastor Vigo don't miss out. We're going to talk about the resurrected life which we are living today. Can I get an amen? So here we see the death of Jesus. Later, knowing that all was now completed. Finished. It was completed. And so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. 
uh, a jar of wine vinegar was there so they soaked the sponge in it put the sponge in the stalk on a hisco plant and they lifted it up to Jesus' lips when he received the drink Jesus said it is finished with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit so here we see Jesus he completed the course here he said, it's finished. He says, I have to do everything. My course is done and it is finished. I have completed my race. I have got to where I get to get to. And that's what you and I have to look for today. We got to keep going as Christians. We got to keep pressing in. We got to keep praying. We got to keep reading the word. We got to keep teaching our kids the gospel. We got to keep going. No matter what happens, we got to keep going because he kept going and he could say it is finished. Troubles are going to come our way. Fear is going to come our way. Unbelievers are scared right now. But if we're believers, we should not be scared. We should have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross gave us the victory where we will have the joy and the peace of God in our hearts, in our lives, in our spirit, and in our household. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Press in to God. Because something took place at that cross too. And I'll share it with you right now. Look what Apostle Paul says. Galatians 2.20, he said, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Where does he live? In him. Just like he lives in you and I. Tell your husband, Christ loves in, lives in you. Tell your children, Christ lives in you. Tell your wife, Christ lives in you. Tell your household, Christ is in us. So he says, I was crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ who lives in me. The life I live now, in my body, in the body, I live by faith. Don't lose your faith. Now we know that our ministry is going over faith over fear. In our mother church, our elders are speaking. Pastor Sonny is speaking. Don't lose your faith. Because if you lose your faith, then you will fear. You got to keep pressing in with your faith. Because your faith is what will get you there. But he says, I live by faith in the Son. Where? In Jesus. In the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself up for me. So when you look at this, it's kind of hard to understand and hard to believe. In today's days. Do you know Pastor Vico was crucified with Christ over 2,000 years ago and he wasn't even born? That's how good that cross was. That's how good that crucifixion was. That's how good the mysteries of God are. Do you know your husband was crucified with Christ over 2,000 years ago? Your wife was crucified. Your children were crucified. All the believers were crucified with Christ. And if we were crucified with him, that means we resurrected with him too. So look how good the cross is. At the cross, heaven opened. And God poured out every spiritual blessing for the saints. He even goes on in the epistles and he says, the inheritance is in the saints, not for the saints. Everything is in the saints. And that's what Jesus was talking about back in John 14. He said, it's going to come a time. Where uh, you know, the world will not see me no more. But he says, I'm going to be in the Father and I'm going to be in you. And then when he died on the cross, now Christ is in you and I. And if Christ is in us, who could be against us? You are more than a conqueror. You are victorious because you got Jesus in you. We got to speak life into our family. We got to speak life into each other. We got to understand what the cross has done for you and I. Can I get an amen? Now after the cross, we know that the Holy Spirit came in power. In Acts, we know that that happened. Uh, and we received the Holy Spirit. But at this cross, Jesus got some stripes. He got some whips. He got some cuts. But that was for a reason. Because by his stripes, we would be healed. 
You were on his mind when he was getting them stripes. You were in his thoughts when he was getting them stripes. God knew what he was doing. And God says, every time he took a stripe, somebody got healed of cancer. Every time he took a stripe, somebody got healed, amen, of leukemia. Every time he took a stripe, someone else got healed of COVID-19. God wants to heal his people. That's why he took and paid the price for you and I. Also, at the cross, when the blood was shed, huh? when we were cleansed with the blood, when the price was paid, amen, when, the, when he did that for you and I, he cleansed us, he washed us, he purified us at the cross and we weren't even born yet. This all took place, there was only one cross. He got crucified one time and that's all it took. Amen. There's no second time. There's no third time. Jesus did it one time and he was a one hit wonder when that came there. He did it and he didn't have to do it again, but he did it for you and I. Good Friday. That's why we call it Good Friday. It's not Bad Friday. It's not an okay Friday. We got to celebrate. We are Christians. Amen. We are saved. We are sanctified. We are justified. We've been born. He paid the price in full. You and I have life and life to the full because we got Christ in us. This is what took place at the cross. I'm a little, a little excited. Amen. I've been on lockdown for the last three days. Amen. And I wasn't like 23 and an hour and hour. It was like 24, 24. Amen. I've been on lockdown. And I've been, I, well, no, I love in this time. I get to read more. I get to study more. I get to pray more. Uh, I get to meditate more. Amen. I preach this message in my truck. I preach this message at home. I don't need someone to preach to me. I get scriptures and I preach to myself because faith comes by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. And when I speak, it comes back to my ear and it gives me faith. Amen. Now what else happened at the cross? He paid the price in full. Huh? In full. Not just half wasn't half baked he paid it in full in full the price was paid in full now back in those days what would happen is the Romans in the Roman days when somebody had a death amen they would get that person and they would put them in prison and they would nail the death to the door he can't get out of there Till somebody comes and pays that debt. Now you and I weren't born. Hello. Because it's a long time ago. But did, when someone would come and pay that debt. Then they would allow him out. Then that person was free. But this is what Jesus did at the cross. He paid our debt in full. Even before we made any mistakes. He paid our debt in full and he gave us liberty and freedom. Amen. He gave it because if you're in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is past. Behold, all things become new. And he set us free. And we weren't even born yet. That's how much power this cross had. This cross goes for eternity. Amen. It doesn't stop 10 years later and run out of gas. Amen. It's not like your gas tank. When you go and you put gas in, you got to put it back in during the week. But I'm here to let you know when Jesus paid our price in full, all our debts were paid with him. Amen. So that means every sin that you're about to commit, he's already paid the price for. Doesn't give you a freedom to sin. Because that's going to mess up your life. But this is what he said. He said, I know my people. I know my children. I know my son. I know my daughter. I know who's coming. And he says, I'm going to have to pay it in full. Because when God does something, he does it in full. So, over 2,000 years ago, every sin that you didn't even commit was already forgiven. Huh? Huh? Because you didn't sin yet. I didn't sin yet. I wasn't even taught of. But he taught of us. He taught of our weakness. He says in the weakness, I shall make them strong. 
Amen. He taught of us. He taught of us. Can I get an amen tonight? It's kind of different when I haven't got any people around me. But I love you. And we miss you. For at the cross, this is what took place at this cross. At this cross, you and I were justified. You and I were sanctified. You and I were purified. At this cross, Natasha wasn't born yet. Gabriel wasn't born yet. Maria wasn't born yet. Art wasn't born yet. Martha wasn't born yet. Amen. Javier wasn't born yet. But at this cross, you are justified as just as if it never happened right then over 2,000 years ago. That's the power of this cross and what he did for you and I. Now, when you see ED at the end of a word, that means past tense. Like if I say I'm going to finish something, it means I still have to finish it. But if I say it's finished, it's finished. So when you see the ED, I was no scholar. I didn't know algebra in school and all that. But a new ED at the end of a word meant it's past tense. It's already happened. It's behind me. Can I get an amen? And then also, now that we live in the new covenant, we live in the new covenant. The blood was shed. He rose again on the third day. Amen. He poured out his Holy Spirit. He filled the saints with the fullness of God. He put the inheritance in the saints. He poured out every spiritual blessing for you and I. Amen. We didn't have to do anything to get it. The only thing we had to do, all things are possible for those who believe. You cannot earn God's love. You don't have to work for God's love. God loves you just the way you were. And all you got to do is believe it. All you got to do is receive it. All you got to do is have faith. All you got to do is tell people about Jesus. All you got to do is believe that God died on the cross and he rose again. And that's all we need is faith. Don't lose your faith. Don't get weary with your faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Tell your husband, keep the faith. Tell your wife, keep the faith. Tell your children, keep the faith. Amen. Because God is a good God. God is a great God. But he did all this over 2,000 years ago. <laughs> we weren't even born. Amen. So when you look at that, in the old covenant, let's call this the old covenant on this side. The old covenant before the cross, the cross is before us. Amen. There is. It's before us. If you're not saved, the cross is before you. Amen. But when you get saved and you ask Jesus into your heart, and then what you do is you believe he died and he rose again, now we're in the new covenant. Now we're in the blessed assurance. Now we got Christ in us and we're in him. Now the cross is behind us. The cross is not before us no more. It was before the disciples. Huh? That's why they got a little bit weary at the end. But we already know what took place at the cross and what took place at the resurrection. And we have to be a Christian that keep the faith. But we got to spread the grace of God. We got to spread it with our family. We got to spread it with our loved ones. It, it, it is never a time. The time is now to tell everybody about Jesus. But keep your physical distance. Amen. Can I get an amen? Do you know, in the last month, I don't, everybody wants to know about God. Amen. I had so many people, why are you so happy? Why are you always smiling? I have Jesus. I have Jesus in me. If God is for me, who can be against me? Amen. I got Jesus. And so do you. Okay, let me go a little bit further. Is that okay? So now that we live in the new covenant, the Bible says where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. And then look at this. This is a key scripture. All things work out for the good. All things. Not some things. I'm talking to believers. And if you're not a believer, I challenge you 
And I want to give you the opportunity to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then you can have life and life to the full. And you are going to heaven because that's the ticket to heaven is your faith in Jesus Christ. If any of your family need Jesus, let them know. Lead them to the Lord. Give them the opportunity to live the blessed lives just like we are. We may be on lockdown, but we got joy. We got peace. Hello, somebody. We got the joy of the Lord. We praise God. We pray. We give him the glory. That don't change. Things on the outer don't get on on the inner. Not in a Christian. I'm not with the Holy Ghost. So let me go a little bit further. All things works out for the good. Oh, my God. We can park there. So the prophecy of the crucifixion, what he was going to do after the resurrection. And there he goes a little bit further. All things work out for the good of those who love him. Now, I know you love God. There's nothing in your life that is going to happen that is not in God's rearview mirror. He's already toured your todays, your tomorrows, and your next years to come. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He already knows the end. And if we read the Bible, we know the end too. And then we will have the joy of the Lord. And we will have the peace of God. We will have it in our hearts. We will have it in our spirit. We will have it in our household. But all things he said work out for the good. Latasha is going to work out. Martha is going to work out. Maria is going to work out. Edna is going to work out. Andy and Liz, it's going to work out because he said all things work out for the good of those who love him. And Carmen and the kids, it's going to work out. God's got it in his hands. God's got it. And he's got the promises of God. Are yay and amen. He promised it to you and I. Can I get an amen? So I'm coming to a close. A few more minutes. Oh, okay. See, God already toured your tomorrows. The Bible says in Romans, it says nothing can separate you from God. Nothing. No illness, no sickness, no stress, no anxiety, no sin. Nothing can separate you from God. Nothing. Because God is in you. He says, as me and the Father are one, so you and the Father are one. The glory the Father gives to me, I give to you too. If Jesus is in you, amen. And what happens is well, we have church Friday night and we have church Sunday morning in two different locations. Now, if you're going to that location to meet with God, I'm telling you, you're going to the wrong place because God's not going to be there waiting on you. And next of all, you go to the Denker Center to meet with God. I'm here to let you know that God is in you. God is in your household. All you got to do is believe that he has put the fullness of God within you. So otherwise, 24-7, God's address will be Maria. Yeah. God's address will be Richard. God's address will be Pastor Vico. God's address will be Carmen. God's address, hello, is you. If he had an abode, you would be it. Because God is living on the inside. Amen. So let me go a little bit further. <clears throat> because of this cross, because of this great victory, because it, oh my God, this is better than World War II. Hitler hadn't got a patch on Jesus. Jesus did it all in one shot. Amen. And all he had was two pieces of wood. He didn't need no atomic bomb. He didn't need no nuclear things. All he needed was his blood and his obedience and his sacrifice. And he knew where he was going to. He knew he was going to die. He knew it was going to play, take place. But he was thinking of you. He was thinking of your children. He was thinking of your mother. He was thinking of your dad. He was thinking of humanity. He was thinking of the ones that are lost because he said, I'm going to pay this price and I'm going to pay it in full. And when this happened, do you know we were accepted? Huh? Old covenant. 
You had to do things to get accepted. Huh? You had to sacrifice things. They had to put blood. They had to sacrifice lambs and goats in order for God to show up. They had so many laws, so many regulations that took them away from God. But when the cross came, Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice. And you don't have to do anything. All you got to do is believe. And you're accepted by God. His love for you is unconditional. He loves us that much. He gave his only begotten son. Amen. And then also, you were approved. Huh? You're already approved. You don't have to do loads of work to get reproved by God. Amen? you got to study the scriptures to see that you are already approved by God. Otherwise, he put a stamp on you. If you look at the icons in basketball or in football, the halls of fame, amen, and they have this of Michael Jordan, and they have this of Tom Brady, and they have this of LeBron James. Guess what? In the kingdom, they have one of Richard Ledesma. They have one of Art Muniz. They have one of Martha. They have one of Pastor Vico. You've already been approved. Amen. You have a seat at the table, and your name is on that seat. That's why Jesus said, I'm going and I'm going to prepare a mansion for you. He said, I'm going to give you a mansion. God loves you so much, people. So now you have a seat at the table. Man, isn't God so good? Hasn't that cross got so much power? Power. When you talk about the cross, it's not religion. It's not a tradition. It's a belief. Amen. It's a relationship. It's what he did for us. That he wouldn't leave us as orphans. Do you know? This too will pass. Victory Outreach Westlake. And anyone else that is tuning in. It's a time. To bring the gospel of grace into your house. What a, what a great time. We can't say we're busy and busy and busy. We're busy, we're busy. I look at pastors in our ministry and all over the world, and they probably have not spent so much time with their children in many, many years because of the busyness. But what a great time. What a great time. Now you're sitting in your sitting room watching church. Now, Dad, I hope your kids are not on a different computer. They should be at church. Because the Bible says if you train your children up into the ways of the Lord, they will not depart. They may make mistakes. They may go missing in their teenagers. You know that happens to a lot of people. You know how we get when we're youth. But what happens is if you train them into the ways of the Lord, they should not depart. Dad, mother, it's your responsibility to have Bible study with your children. It's your responsibility to share God's grace with them. It's your responsibility that you're the head of the household that you can have Bible study on a Tuesday. You don't have to go to Southside Journey. You don't have to go to Jer Jurassic Park or Jefferson Park, whatever you want to call it. You don't have to come to Richard's house. You can get your kids and say, guess what? We're having Bible study tonight because I'm going to teach you the goodness of God. You're going to know what Easter's about. You're going to know what the crucifixion is about. I'm going to train you in the ways of the Lord and teach them about God's grace. Because if you don't teach them, someone else will teach them something else. It's your responsibility to train your child up in the ways of the Lord. Give me an amen, children. Amen. It's time to bring the gospel of grace into our household. Pray with your children. Pray with your wife. Amen. Take this serious. Get a hold of God. Keep the faith. Jesus did it. And it's finished. Everybody's waiting for him to do something great. He's not going to do anything great till he comes back. That's what the word of God says. But now that he's in us, it's time for us to do something great where he can do it through us. Because that's how God works. He works through us. He doesn't work through wood. He doesn't work through a pulpit. 
Amen. He works through you and I. Because we are his hands and his feet and his voice. And we got to share the grace of God. And the many other time, you may be going through some struggles right now. Anxiety, fear, work is slowing down. You know, the, the finances is not coming in the way it used to be. We have something that took place and that be called troubles and anxiety and fear. Amen. Don't let that come into your house and into your life. And you're fighting with your wife and you're angry with your kids. And now you're all stressed out. Man, your trust has to be in Jesus. He is our provider. He can provide much more than we can provide. Amen. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will give you a little more than enough, the Bible says. He loves to bless his children. Get into God's word. Get into God's word. Read it. See this thing here? Read it. Read it. I don't listen to the news. I don't. I don't even have a TV. I like Netflix. Amen. But I don't have a TV. And when I do, I don't listen. If I go somewhere. Every time since I was a kid, the only news they tell is bad news. So you got that vice coming into your house all the time. You put on the radio, it's bad news. Amen. Unless you listen to Kayla, amen, a Christian station or the fish or something. But it's all bad news. Turn off the bad news switch and get into the good news of Jesus Christ. Put worship on. Set an atmosphere of life, amen, where people are not stressed out in your house. We're too blessed to be stressed. Amen. So I'll leave it with that, the cross. Jesus said, it's finished. He said, I'm done. He said, now it's up to you. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's up to you. You got to study for yourself to show yourself that you're approved. You got to search the scriptures. You got to be at church Friday. You got to be at church Sunday. And then even through to this time, you're going to have the kids that want to go to the backyard. You're going to have kids that want to run over here. Let them have church with the family. Huh? Have church together. And say, listen, it's like when I was a kid, we never told our mother no. When she brings us to church, we, she had 10 kids. We had no choice. We didn't want to go, but we had to go. Amen. We, we didn't. We didn't want to say the rosary, but we had to say the rosary. Because we knew who the authority of the house was, was the parents. And sometimes that authority has to come back in with the things of God. But I never forget the elementary teachings I had about Jesus and Samson. Amen. Samson was one of my favorite stories when I was six. But later on, still here. Good training. Train your children in the Lord. Train them. Teach them. Now with that, I'm going to pray. Then after the prayer, we're going to take up our tithes and our offerings and our united we can. But just in case there's anyone, if you're not saved, it's Easter weekend. Churches all over America, it's usually the biggest audience everybody knows about the cross everybody knows about Jesus they go Christmas too because of his birth to give reverence to Jesus but I want to introduce you and give you the opportunity tonight to ask Jesus into your life he died he rose now he wants to come into you where you can live life and life much more abundantly. it's a better life but the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. So if that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and you rose again. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I ask you into my heart. Help me, Lord. all things are possible for those who believe 
And if you did accept the Lord, get a Bible. Learn. Read. Can't tell you to go and find the church. Stay online. And learn how to pray. And then go and tell somebody, a family member. Say, you know what? I accepted Jesus in my life. I accepted Jesus. And if you know any of your family that are not saved, this is a great time for you to reach out to them too. And invite them Sunday morning. Because Pastor Vico's going to come with a message on the resurrection. The resurrected life of Christ, which now we live in the new covenant. So with that, if you're ready to give tonight, we have two ways of giving paypal and then there's victory outreach i believe and it's going to be posted on the screen right now and we encourage you to stay faithful in your tithing and your giving and your offerings and your giving amen stay faithful and then also if you're a united we can member united we can we encourage you go to victory outreach international.org and that way you can give straight to the corporate office because we used to take at the church and then we would send it we want to encourage you now, since we're in this time, just to be faithful with that. And that goes to the mission fields. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget Sunday. It's going to be exciting. Amen. Get ready. Get the kids up. Get them ready for Easter Sunday resurrection service. And I get an amen. God bless you.